Today, we are going to work on a free motion quilting version of this classic Baptist fan. So the key to this design is really all in this little magic template that we are going to make together. So you may already have most of the supplies you need for this template. This is uh, template plastic, which you can get um, in packs, or you can use these really thin cutting mats, which is what I actually use for this template and what I'm going to use again. They're really easy to cut, they're super cheap, and they're really easy to work with. I got a pack of six of them off Amazon and these will last me a very long time. They're a little bit thicker than template plastic and I think that works well for this template that we need to really use pretty heavily. You're also gonna need a ruler with some markings on it, any quilting ruler will do. This is a 1 8 inch hole punch, and that is going to punch all the little holes that we need in the template. And then you'll need some scissors and just a marking marker. The first thing I need to do is just cut a strip off of this piece of plastic. And it doesn't have to be any particular size. I'm going to make mine about an inch and a half. You could maybe use a rotary cutter for this, but I'm just going to use scissors. I'm also just gonna round the corners so they aren't super sharp. Maybe next time I'll get those colored cutting boards so I don't lose my template all the time. So the length of this template needs to be at least as long as the radius of the Baptist fan you wanna make. So these are just a couple of inches. These are about three inches. So my template would need to be at least maybe an inch longer than that. I'm gonna make this one about half of the width of this template plastic because I know I want to use it for small Baptist fans. Once we have the length, then we need to do our markings. Now the distance between the holes is another thing that is up to you. On this template, I marked every half inch and that's a pretty versatile distance because you don't have to use every hole. You can use every other hole for an inch. Um, some people like to mark every three quarters of an inch. Again, that's up to you. How far apart do you generally want your quilting lines? I'm gonna stick with a half an inch distance. So I am gonna grab my marker and I'm just gonna make a little dot every half inch up the center of my template. These marks do not have to be uh, permanent. It's awfully hard to write on this template plastic or uh, cutting boards. So we just need these to last long enough for us to punch holes. And that's what I'm gonna do. I like this little eighth inch punch because it does make a smaller hole. The more traditional office, it's probably what, like a quarter of an inch. It's a little big and you're not gonna get as precise um, fans if you use that. But if that's all you have, then go for it. It's still going to work. You're still going to be able to use the template. So now that we have our template finished, I have my little mini quilt sandwich here and it is time to mark. You need to mark at least the section that you're working on. You don't have to mark the entire quilt all at once, but um, it's not a bad idea either. We have a few options for marking. This pen is an air erasable marker and this one is really old if you are super speedy. <laughs> I marked um, a small sample with this and I, I thought it was water soluble, but it was air erasing. And so it was kind of a race to finish the quilting on it before it all disappeared. So I would say use this only if you are working on a really small area with this design. That leaves us with water erasable, which is always a really reliable option. Um, I like this Clover one, but I know there are many other brands. I like this since it has the little eraser, super handy. There are also these heat erasable pens, which are new to me. I just bought these and I thought we'd give them a try. Uh, there's a couple colors in here. So why don't we use these three and see which one works the best? and see if they actually do erase with iron. You are also gonna need something like a stiletto or even just a straight pin to act as a pivot for our template. We're gonna begin on the lower left corner of our top and you're gonna align this first hole in your template to be kind of the home hole and it's gonna go right in the very corner of your top. And you're gonna put your stiletto in there 
And that is gonna be the anchor point for this first fan. Now my holes are half an inch apart. Yours may be different, but now it's time to decide if you're gonna use every hole, if you're going to skip a hole. Um, I'm going to use every other hole so that my quilting lines are an inch apart. And so I'm gonna skip this first one and put my pen right into this hole and then use the pen to pivot around my stiletto here. And I'm just gonna give myself that little arc and then I'm gonna skip the next hole and do the same thing with the fourth and the sixth. And let's do four fans around this one. There's no set number of arcs you need to add to your Baptist fan. Uh, you could do three, you could do 10, whatever you feel comfortable with. Once we're done with this first one, we're gonna move to the right along the bottom of our sandwich. And my next pivot point is gonna be right at the base of this final echo of our first fan. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm gonna skip a hole and just use my pen to swivel this template around. And I'm gonna mark I'm marking from the edge of my quilt sandwich until I hit a previous fan. And then I'm gonna stop. And I'm gonna move along to the final fan for this row. And I'm just drawing as much as will fit. So it doesn't come all the way down and be a complete fan, but I'm still gonna quilt this partial fan here. This second row is where it gets a little tricky because ideally we want our fan, our second row fans, to begin and end at the valleys of the first row. So our pivot point is gonna be right here, and that's also gonna be where the final arc comes down to land. But how do we do that when we don't have a pivot point out here to work off of? So to do that, we need to identify the hole that is the last one we used when we're doing our fans. And for me, it's this one right here, the second to last hole. So I'm going to line up that hole with the end of where I want that arc to land. Now, if you want to be really precise, you can grab a ruler and align the edge of your fabric to make sure that this template is really straight. If you are using a long template, then you can use the holes to make sure that they are straight across your design. See how that hole marks that valley and it marks this valley. So I know it's relatively straight across my work. Or you could just eyeball it. And that is also okay. So I'm gonna put my stiletto out here at this pivot point. And we are gonna draw in the beginning of this design. I got a little wobble there where it wasn't quite going straight because the fabric was shifting. That's okay. We'll just put a little X through that and just only pay attention to the nice line. Eventually, these lines will all disappear and no one will ever be the wiser. And now we're gonna proceed as we did on the first row. I have my pivot point identified. I'm gonna put my stiletto right there and I am gonna draw in my arcs using the same pattern as I had before. Now I've reached the end. I have a pivot point here, but I have this little extra space here that I do need to fill in with just a little partial fan. So that's what I'm gonna do. This will give us a pivot point for the beginning of the next row, and it will just make our design look really nice and complete. For this third row, we are back to normal. We have a pivot point that is at the beginning of our row. So I am going to put it right here and do my same design. Now, not all of these lines are going to be on my fabric, that's okay. So here's something that's happening. This hole isn't quite lining up with where that pivot point should be. This pivot point should be like right here. So I'm gonna just cheat it. I'm gonna drag my template back a little bit so that that hole lines up with where I want it to go. It's a really minimal adjustment, but it will make all of the fans line up 
as we go. And this happens. This is not precision engineering. This is a template that we made ourselves on fabric that stretches. No quilt is absolutely perfect. It is learning how to make these little adjustments so that they look perfect when in fact they might be a little off. Now that we have our design all marked, it is time to actually quilt it. And we are going to quilt it in the same order that we outlined it in, that we drew our lines on. We're going to start in the lower left corner, work along the bottom edge, and then we're going to go row by row, working left to right until we reach the top. So this is our first fan that we need to tackle. Ultimately, we want to end up here. We want to end up in the lower end of our fan so that we can begin the next fan really easily. So that's our goal, to start here and end here. So if we trace back, we're going to go around this edge, come down, down, across, around, down. So we want to start here so that we can end here. If we started here, we would stitch down along the edge, up, and we would end over here, which is really far from where we need to be to start the next fan, which would be right here. So just thinking about where you wanna end on that first fan and establishing which direction to stitch this first arc in will help this whole design go much more smoothly. <laughs> I am just stitching right along the lines that are printed on our fabric here. So I started at the S for start, arced around, and now I'm going to just stitch up the side so that I can get to this next arc. I've stitched along into my batting and now I'm gonna trace this next arc. I'm back to my batting again, so travel up. And now we're on our final arc down. We're gonna end just where we wanted it to be. And now I've ended just where I wanna be at that end. So now I can start the next fan right here. So I'm at the start of my fan two, and it's gonna be exactly the same, except I'm gonna hit a line of stitching rather than stitch off the edge of my quilt. So once I hit that line of stitching, I am gonna travel along that line of stitching to get up to that second arc. <laughs> This is probably the trickiest part of this design. Stitching along a previously stitched line is always a little tricky, but you will most likely be using matching thread, which will help camouflage any little bobbles. Just take it slow, work at a speed that is comfortable for you. Um, when I am traveling, I work pretty darn slowly and I don't have any problems with that. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna continue this first row, working either off the edge into the batting or tracing along a previously stitched line to complete this first row of fans. I've completed my first three fans and I am done with this row. Now I find it easier to work from the inside of the fan to the outside. So I'm gonna just break my thread here and start again on the left side with my next row. Since we're working off into the batting, it's a really easy place to uh, break thread and start again. Now we have this partial fan to begin our second row, and we still wanna end up here. We still wanna end at that pivot point for the next fan so that we can work outward going this way. So we just need to trace back and think about where we wanna begin, which edge we wanna begin this second arc in. I want to end here, so if I trace back, I'm going to start here and quilt up and then quilt back down. So now we've reached the part in our quilt where we are going to be traveling along previously stitched lines on both edges of our arcs. 
So it's a little bit more difficult than working off the edge of our quilt, but it's the same process. <laughs> And that's all there is to a uh, free motion quilting a Baptist fan. We're going to have some partial fans to deal with, but they're going to be worked the same way as these starter ones. And in the end, you will have this really fantastic looking Baptist fan. I'm going to go ahead and finish this and then we're going to press it and see if those pens actually disappeared. So here's my finished sample. Now I pressed it and all of those markings have totally disappeared. You can only see my stitching lines except for here where I did have some air erasable markers where I was showing where to start and end. I don't know if these are going to be permanent now since I ironed them in. They very may well be. <laughs> and that's okay. This is just a sample for me. If you are working on a cool top, it's really important to use all the same markings so that you can not have this problem that I have. So those are the basics of free motion quilting a Baptist fan. It's a design I see a lot of um, hand quilters or long arm quilters use, but I don't see a lot of free motion quilters use it on a stationary machine. This is another sample I did with the same spacing, so it looks very similar, but this is a, a little bit more matching thread than the black on the yellow. There's variations. On this one, I did every other line with a little bit of a wave and it creates a whole different look. On this one, I varied the spacing. So on our little templates, I skipped a hole and then I did the next hole and then I skipped a hole and did the next hole. So the spacing is more like one inch, half inch, one inch, half inch, just to give a little bit more variety. But it is quilted in exactly the same way. There's really a lot of different options for this design. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and you are ready to tackle it on your next quilt. So until next time, happy quilting.